Section 21.7, Magnetic Fields Produced by Currents. Here's the big idea. A current carrying wire also produces a magnetic field of its own. So if you have a wire hooked up to a battery like as shown here and the current is traveling up through it, you can put a bunch of compasses around it and they won't point north anymore. They point in a circle around the wire. So we have right-hand rule number two that will actually tell us the direction of the magnetic field here. So for right-hand rule number two, we're going to, instead of having all our right angles like we did before, it's going to be a bit more of a curly, right? Our thumb is gonna be the direction of the current, which is convenient because that's what was before. It was the direction of the moving charges. So the thumb is the current, and then the fingers are still the magnetic field, but now instead of being a straight line, they are curling around in a circle, and that's the direction of the magnetic field at any point, right? So we show the wire with the current going up, so it's a thumbs up here, and then the magnetic field at this point to the left of the wire is coming out of the screen, right at us, right? Uh, and so I want you to try this out yourself. Get your right hand and see that as it comes around, the fingers are pointed at you. They're coming out at you. This is the basis for the direction of the magnetic field around a long straight wire. We can also calculate the magnetic field created by a long straight wire. If we want to calculate it, the magnetic field B is equal to the constant mu naught times the current divided by two divided by pi divided by r, where r is the distance from the wire to the point of interest. So maybe here we're interested in this point, so we measure how far away it is from the wire, that's our r. Now what's the direction of the magnetic field at this point? Well, because we've used our right-hand rule, we know the magnetic field is creating these circles around the wire. Notice they're closer together, is they're close closer to the wire because it's the magnetic field is stronger closer to the wire and they spread out as the magnetic field gets weaker moving away from the wire. But at this point we follow the circle around and we could draw on the tangent to the circle and that would be the magnetic field at that particular point. So we've drawn magnetic field lines for any of these points but then you have to get specific to a single one. Now this mu naught as I mentioned is a constant it's given by four times pi times 10 to the minus seven teslas times meters per amp. So it's known as the permeability of free space. It's the magnetic version of epsilon naught or permittivity of free space. This tells us how much free space is able to sustain magnetic fields. And we'll see that mu naught and epsilon naught are closely tied together. So that's coming and that's going to be really exciting. You'll want to see that. But for now, it's just a constant and that's all we need is that's four pi times 10 to the minus seven. So not something you have to have memorized, but is handy to know. All right, now that we have this knowledge, let's try it out with an example. The current exerts a magnetic force on a moving charge. The long straight wire carries a current of three amps particle has a charge of plus 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs and is moving parallel to the wire at a distance of 0 0.050 meters. The speed of the particle is 280 meters per second. Very fast. Determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the particle. Right, so this is one where drawing a picture is really helpful. So we first are going to need a long straight wire, pretend that's nice and straight, and it has a current I in it. So we'll label that current, and then we have this positive particle that's moving parallel to the wire at a distance of 0 0.05 meters. So it's a distance from any direction, but I'm going to draw it off to the right here. Right, that is our distance 0 0.05. The only reason I did it to the right is because that's easier to draw. 
but we know that it's parallel to the wire and that's the most important part here, right? So I could draw it in that's a little positive charge and that is moving parallel to the wire with its speed, 280 meters per second. Well, I can drop that down the side, but the important thing here is how can we figure out the direction of the force? With the electric field, that was a little bit easier. How do we do that with the magnetic field? First, we need to figure out the direction of the magnetic field acting on this charged particle. So that's where we use our right hand rule. Get our thumb in the direction of the current, and then our fingers curling around will give us the magnetic field. And at that point, I get that the magnetic field is pointing into the screen. Try it yourself, make sure you can get that. So let's see, I'll get some red here. And to go into, I'm gonna draw it with an X. That is the magnetic field going into the screen. Great, now we know the direction of the magnetic field. But is that what the question's asking for? It's asking about the direction of the magnetic force. Mm -hmm. So if we want the magnetic force, how can we get that? Well, that's where we go back to the earlier ideas of right-hand rule number one, that we have a charge that is moving within a magnetic field. The magnetic field was created by the current carrying wire, but we can just focus in now that we know the direction of the magnetic field that was created by the wire, we can focus in on the charge that is moving through this magnetic field. So we'll go back to our, as before, our thumb is gonna be the direction of the velocity, and then our index finger will be the direction of the magnetic field, and our palm or our middle finger will be the direction of the force. So I need to line up my thumb with the velocity going up, the magnetic field is going into the screen, which I encourage you to try this out, draw it going into the screen, try it with your hand. That tells me that the force, my middle finger, is pointed toward the wire. So that is the direction of the force toward the wire. Make sure that you're comfortable with using both right hand rule number two to get the direction of the magnetic field produced by the wire and right hand rule number one to get the direction of the force given that we have a charged particle moving through a magnetic field. Both are important there. All right, we can see a clearer picture of this perhaps um, from the textbook where it shows um, the current in the wire and the charged particle is moving up and the magnetic field created by the wire is from our view, it had been into the page. This is a 3D view, so you can see it a little more and the force is toward the wire. Following right-hand rule number two, V up, B forward and F in. All right, now how do we get the magnitude of the magnetic force? Well, first we're going to need the magnitude of the magnetic field. We need to know how much magnetic field there is at this point. Once we know that, then we can go back to our magnetic force equation. So let's take a look. The magnetic force equation is Q times V times B times sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. And the B, the magnetic field, we can calculate for that of a long straight wire. Mu naught times I divided by two divided by pi divided by R. So if we plug those in up there, multiply by Q, multiply by V, and sine of what is the angle here? Well, notice V is going up and V is going out, so that would be sine of 90 degrees. And so multiplying those out, you should find that it works out just fine. All right, so now that we've seen that framework of a problem, I wanted to highlight another interesting implication of current carrying wires creating magnetic fields. It turns out that current carrying wires can exert forces not just on charged particles, but also on other current carrying wires. And the way you can figure out the direction of the forces 
is you could look at the magnetic field created by one and figure out the force that wire two would experience due to that magnetic field. So one here, the V, it's coming sort of out of the page. And so the magnetic field to the right of it is going up. That's what's shown here by the B. So there's this upward magnetic field on wire two, but it has positive charges or current moving up on the wire with a magnetic field up. So that means the force is to the right. And it turns out you can do the exact same thing with what wire one experiences due to the magnetic field from wire two. I encourage you to go through it so that you can convince yourself of that. But for everyday purposes, it's much faster if you can just remember when the currents are going in opposite directions, the forces, the wires repel each other. There's a repulsive force. If the currents are going in the same direction, the wires attract each other. Again, you can go through the process of figuring out the direction of the magnetic field and thus the direction of the force, and you will see this same principle come into play. Now that we've seen this idea, let's take a look at a conceptual example. The net force that a current carrying wire exerts on a current carrying coil. Is the coil attracted to, repelled by the wire, or neither attracted nor repelled from the wire? So I'd like you to think about this, come up with an answer for yourself, and even give me a little some signal, even though I won't be able to see it, but I'm gonna trust that you're out there doing it before you move on. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, let's take a look. Do we notice I1 is moving to the right and the top of this coil, the current is also moving to the right. The bottom is moving to the left. Now, what do we remember? If they're moving in opposite directions, they repel, but if the currents are moving in the same direction, they attract. So does this mean that neither happens? It's neither attracted nor repelled from the wire? That's where we have to be careful. Because notice for I1, are both segments of the coil an equal distance from I1? No, this top segment is much closer. Because it's closer, that means the magnetic field is larger. Then as you move further away, the magnetic field is going to have to be smaller. If it's a stronger magnetic field, that means it's going to have a larger effect on the top of the coil than on the bottom of the coil. So even though we have opposite effects of attraction and repulsion, the attraction is going to win out here. So thumbs up the coil is attracted to the wire. We have more examples of this to see, so stick around for the next video to see how this continues.